We've had some new information, some of which Greg just talked about in his report. And another piece, line here, I'll start with you, that came in about an hour or, go, or so ahead of the meeting is that Kim Jong-un has moved up his departure time, for what it's worth. So now President Trump will, as, as well, leave a little bit earlier than had first been planned. Do you read into that uh, or no? No, Connell, I don't read too much into it. I guess the, the bottom line here, and this was a point that your reporter made there in his stand-up from Seoul, is that a lot of the hard work that's going to happen is going to happen after this meeting. Look, this meeting's great for the photo op. It's great for the cameras. It's great for what it represents. But in terms of the hard work of what the future pathway forward is going to look like, if we're going to have denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula, that's going to mean a lot more. And so I wouldn't read too much into this meeting ending earlier, or ending a little bit earlier than expected. No, that's fair. The president's talked about that this being a process, probably trying to set some sort of expectation going in or lower some sort of expectation going in. Um, Peter, let me ask you about something that did come up in Greg's report, and this is this whole idea that Secretary uh, of State Pompeo at first said that the U.S. is prepared to make security assurances uh, for the North if they agree to de denuclearize. But to Greg's point, then you have Secretary Mattis back here in the States coming out and saying that the troops that we have in South Korea are apparently not on the table. What's, uh, what's going on here? Well, there's a lot of options out there uh, regarding security guarantees. There's confidence in security building measures, perhaps doing things like announcing exercises, have North Koreans observe uh, South Korean U.S. exercises, the disposition of U.S. forces. I mean, there's a whole host of things out there that could be done. Now, of course, in the short term, uh, you know, you, you don't want to change the game too much in terms of our troops there to ensure that North Korea doesn't have something up its sleeves. But over time, Connell, you could certainly yeah. move forces back away from the DMZ with the same thing that the North Koreans could do so that any sort of attack could be uh, you'd have more strategic warning of it. So there's a whole mm -hmm. list of things that could be considered out there. Yeah, they have a lot of different ways they could go. I think the, the way China reacts to all this might be more um, <clears throat> interesting in some ways uh, to, you know, what we do here in the United States or even what the North Koreans do, Lan He. The Chinese actually did put some sanctions in place here in recent years against uh, North Korea. But, you know, based on how this all goes, you wonder what they will do with those sanctions. Do they roll them back a little bit, become even more friendly with North Korea? What role do you think China will play after today? Well, I'd keep an eye on China. I think that they are going to play a very important role in this entire process. I think, for, you know, uh, they have a very, very serious sort of proximate concern, which is what's actually happening on the Korean Peninsula, which is right next door to where they are. But beyond that, obviously, uh, they're concerned about their sphere of influence in the region. Right. You know, obviously, China's goal has always been regional hegemony, and I think that's something that hasn't changed. And so, remember, there's a three-dimensional game of chess going on here, right? You've got the Chinese talking to the U.S. on trade. You've got them influencing North Korea. So I would keep a very close eye on what happens. They are going to be influential in this process, if not directly, certainly through the North Korean yeah, regime. Yeah, and they have been leading up to it. Peter, a quick thought on that from you, and as well as where are your, where's your level of expectation um, going into this? Seems like everybody's trying to set the bar somewhere. Well, I, they're very modest. Uh, you know, I'm trying right. to be cautiously optimistic, but I'm deeply skeptical based on our history at North Korea and North Korea's uh, uh, involvement or its performance on pr uh, previous arms control agreements. So I'm keeping them very modest. I think th they're right in saying that it's a first step in a long journey. Anything, Lonnie, that the president has to be careful of? You know, some have uh, brought up the idea of, hey, be careful kind of picture that is taken out of this, especially if there's nothing big coming out in terms of substance and how it might be seen, the type of propaganda that might be used? Yeah, I mean, I think we have well, to be careful North here Korea's recognizing okay. that. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Lonnie, real quick. And That's then all right. We'll Go ahead, Lonnie. Oh, I was going like, to be careful here because the, the North Korean regime, I mean, these are people uh, th that, that have had some serious problems in the past, serious violations of human rights. So we right. need to be careful not to appear to be too cozy with them. Exactly. It doesn't seem like we're going to wrap this up now. It doesn't seem like the human rights issue is going to come up from what we've heard. But then again, as we say with all these things, once the two of them get in the room, you never know what will come up. Um, Lonnie and Peter, good to see both of you. Thanks a lot.